Hi, I'm Johnny, and this is Comics Altruism with my entry into Strange X Blade's 500 subscriber giveaway. Uh, what he's asked from us, and I'll leave the link to his contest announcement video below so that you can make sure that you have all the details that you need to enter. Even though I'm getting this right under the wire, as always, with like one or two days left before the contest is over, he's asked us to pick our favorite decade in comics show off a bunch of those comics and explain why and he wants us to be as thorough as possible so i've chosen a bunch of books to show off and there's actually a number of reasons why the 1970s are my favorite decade in comics so we may as well turn this around and show you everything congratulations to strange x blade by the way okay i'm gonna try not to be too tangential on you here but let's start with the fact that the 1970s were the beginning of the reprint era and this made things a lot more handy for people like me anyway who couldn't go back and buy Silver Surfer number one and uh, yeah these reprints were actually pretty high quality in fact some of these are preferable to the originals also I like the fact that I can read a book like this and not feel like I'm potentially going to destroy a thousand dollar book not that Silver Surfer was but you know and then you've got retelling of origins like this. I really dig that. And there's another reprint for you. I've got like 40 of these. And they're awesome because most of that Silver Age stuff, like first appearance of Ronin, which I got here, uh, there's no way that I'll ever be able to buy the original books. Not that I would even want to read the original books. I just prefer the reprints. This is another example. They they went through Marvel Tales. They went through a bunch of these reprints of random issues. I forget which one this is an issue of. Uh, not facsimile reprint. Uh, X-Men number one here, same reason. Now the next reason is that a lot of everything that had already made comics great just got better in the 70s. Like you see how much more refined the art is here and how much more bombastic the coloring is. I mean, 60s were great for that reason as well. There's just something about the aesthetic of 70s too, even with this banner. I'm not sure why I have nostalgia for a time before I was born. And these are just a couple other examples. I was going to show more of each of these books, like flipping through so that you could see some of this amazing artwork on the inside. And just the fact that these these books are like, these are hefty reads, some of them. You compare them to modern comic books, and a modern comic book, you can, the majority of them, you can read within five minutes. And these are like an investment of your time, or at least they were. Uh, Daredevil, one of my favorites, he got so much better in the 70s. And then I would have almost chosen the 80s for the fact that Frank Miller got into comic books then. Actually, was he in the 70s? Anyway, it doesn't matter. He got on the Daredevil title in the 80s, and that almost makes the 80s better, but not quite. It's just because the 80s wouldn't have happened without the, the strives that they made in the 70s to kind of increase their creativity and subject matter, like the diversity of the subject matter. Before the 70s, it was always just kind of like, oh, here's a bad guy. Well, I'm a good guy, so uh, I'm going to take you down. Anyway, the team-up comics, they really took off in the 1970s and I really appreciate them the fact that you know everybody knows Spider-Man I didn't know Yellow Jacket till I got this book and uh, obviously then the movie came out and all that stuff but yeah I just really dig the the team up stuff I haven't read enough of them I gotta say here's a here's the thing about the 70s too these ads are awesome like the 1980s were also equally awesome but I remember most of that stuff from the 80s. So I'll flip through an 80s book just to look at the ads for like Nintendo or Atari or whatever. Uh, but these are interesting because these are things that I never actually knew anything about growing up. Like all these. I used to look at these and wonder, hey, I wonder if I could still like submit and get any of this stuff. Because it's all pretty awesome. Okay, the next reason that I really like the 70s is the strives that they took toward diversifying their characters and making each of them unique also delving into human psychology so like you've got spider woman in the first uh, eight to ten issues or so of this run she's really problematic psychologically like she's really isolated and alienated from the rest of society or at least she feels that she is and uh yeah it's 
it was valuable to bring that into the comic book medium, just deeper psychological themes, which is where we come into this. Before, before the 1970s, and this goes with like the Amazing Spider-Man, the Green Lantern, they would never have tackled an issue like addiction back in the 60s and 50s. And I'm not bashing the 60s and 50s, it just wasn't the right time the social climate, the political climate, it just wasn't ready. But 70s totally made it ready. And then I would show off more of these Ms. Marvel books, but feminism in comic books, they failed. <laughs> but, and I'm not going to lie, they totally failed. But they tried. you know. So they, they brought in Ms. Marvel as a female superhero that girls were supposed to be able to look up to. But unfortunately, they missed the mark a little bit with making her like buxom and Farrah Fawcett blonde, you know. But there, there's that. And I just wanted to show these books off because I haven't all consecutively. So I got this. And then I got this just now. Thank you, Super Russ. He sent me a PayPal payment uh, because he had a contest recently that I won. And then, yeah, there was a whole rigmarole with that. But that is awesome. So I got 17 now it's going to be really easy for me to finish off this Ms. Marvel run. And there's number 18, which I've already shown. And again, with the feminism thing, just the fact that Supergirl got her own book, even though, again, she is so girly. <laughs> there's like nothing tough about Supergirl except for her powers. Of course, she's like a super tough superhero and everything. But, I mean, she's presented to sort of perpetuate that fragility of a, of a woman's uh, spirit or empower like complete lack of empowerment but either way she had her own title so that's a start then we've got the fact that there's equal representation of other races as well it took uh, the comic book medium quite some time after this to actually include everybody and in a respectful way like uh, unfortunately I read these sometimes and I look at the way that he talks and I know it was the 70s, like this one is 1972, and I got into Power Man and Iron Fist in the 80s. But even in the 80s, like that jive talking, it's just kind of, it's funny now. But it was really like, if this was released these days, not as a comedy, it would be shut down because it's just like so stereotypical. Unless it was done as like a retro piece. Anyway, I'm just going to show off some more of these to not waste your time because I've never had an opportunity to show off my Luke Cage collection. I've got so many more if you include the Power Man and Iron Fist stuff. But there we go. Just the early stuff for Luke Cage. I love the art. It's so colorful. All right, next up. The creature thing had already been big in all media as far back as the 40s, as we know from the Warner Brothers movies. But as far as comics went, this is where it really started to get into its own. Just, we've seen this before. I'm sure most of us have read this. But, you know, like that whole, just the artwork, it's gritty, but it's also surprisingly um, articulate. And creatures were sort of a dime a dozen back in the 70s as well. So we we came across Jack Russell, Werewolf by Night. That's the uh, most valuable of his stuff, unfortunately. I don't have the first appearance or the number one. But yeah, I just thought I should show that to you as well. And again, with just the whole aesthetic of the boxing and the uh, banner up top, there's something very appealing about that, the juxtaposition of the blue to the red. Tomb of Dracula for more of that, you know, monster stuff that they really started to master in the 70s. And then the barbarian stuff, like the medieval or the fantasy stuff. Uh, I was big into D&D &D as a kid, but it wasn't really a huge thing for me with comic books. It's, unfortunately, I don't have any really valuable uh, Conan comics to show you. And most of my Conan is from the 80s, which are awesome in their own right. But... Yeah, it's, they definitely uh, saw a genre that needed to be um, given more attention to, and they did that admirably with Call the Conqueror, Conan the Barbarian. 
And then, yeah, getting into all that cerebral and mystical stuff too. Unfortunately, I didn't have any valuable Doctor Strange to show you, but the Doctor Strange in the 70s was amazing, just as the Warlock was. Just how far out it was. Like, I know they were doing drugs in the 60s, but I'm wondering if they had gotten into like the heavy hallucinogenics in the early 70s or maybe late 60s to kind of shift their consciousness a little bit to something that uh, was capable of creating this or... Doctor Strange, all that kind of stuff. So definitely the mystical side of the 70s is very appealing to me too. So there it is. If you want to enter, hurry because it's almost over. Like I said, I always get it right under the wire, it seems. Um, but there you go. Thank you, Strange X Blade, for an awesome contest. And yeah, let's see you at 600 subs. All right, bye.